I didn't audition for Fright because um, I had filmed a television commercial, a Nescafe commercial for Peter Collinson. He was a very handsome man, great big waft of floppy blonde hair, um, very tall, very handsome and extremely charismatic and directors didn't really come like that. So those, that was my first impression of him and I think he used that in a, in a great way with women because he just made, I expect he made them all feel that he was in love with them just like he made me feel. And from that he cast me in a film called Up the Junction and I played one tiny role in Up the Junction. I played a character called Joyce who was 16 years of age and a factory worker and pregnant and I had just one or two lines. And then um, he came up with this script that he really wanted me to do which was called Fright. It was a starring role and that's what he wanted for me. Um, he was a really, really big fan of mine which was wonderful and yes, Fright was a very different different breed of film altogether and I loved the, um, the script was intense, extremely powerful about demons and um, obviously this man that had got out of prison and came back to to the family home where this young girl was babysitting and looking after um, the baby while the family were out for dinner and it was a very very scary read and a very scary film. He absolutely made the film something very very special and it was very much his baby and Peter had as I say a, an extremely enigmatic man to know, to work for. I loved working for him. I loved working for him. He was unpredictable. He was a really really good and I feel incredibly underrated film director. I really really do. I think he had a magic all of his own. He had masses of energy and you never knew what was going to happen. There's a real magic in that. There's a real genius. I said the same thing about, about Peckinpah who I later went on to work for. And I think that doing Fright, filming Fright probably was a fantastic warm up to Straw Dogs. I really, really do because it taught me a lot of things that movie about, about the power of direction and the fear factor um, and the intensity. I don't know this for a fact but I'm pretty sure that Peter showed elements or clips or pieces of fright to, um, to the company that were making Straw Dogs and I think Peter was, um, was right behind me and really wanted me to get that role and to do that role. Yes. Hello. Hello. Mrs. Lloyd? Yes. I'm Amanda. Oh, yes, do come in. Thank you. Oh. Suddenly turned cold. Um, Mrs. Sorry I was so long. Oh, that's all right. I, I was just putting Tara to bed. He knows we're going out and he's playing up, but he'll get over it. The, the script was a very powerful script. It didn't strike me as a horror movie. It really didn't. It was a, an intense people movie in a way. And of course the, the, the important person in the piece was Ian Bannon, was this crazy, who in actual fact I got to know Ian and he was a lovely man. But there was definitely a madness he brought to that role. And I remember feeling quite frightened by him. And I think that within that role Ian had analysed and had sorted exactly how that was going to be and how that character was going to be and he kept it most of the time so he didn't let that role or that person really go so to be around offset was difficult with Ian at that time because he was spooky and he was wonderful I mean there couldn't be another person to play that role other than Ian he played it wickedly wisely frighteningly 
so deep, with a deep fear that he had in his person and he managed to put into every other person that came in contact with him. So it was a wonderful, wonderful role and, and he played it wonderfully. For me, playing Amanda was I read the piece and I thought it was a, a frightening piece, a very, very good story and something that I wanted to do. So I didn't know how I was going to play Amanda until the day I turned up on the set. That's how I always worked and that's how I worked that time. I loved Donna and George Cole and um, the making of the movie was lovely. I'd worked with Dennis before and he was lovely. Poor Dennis. I mean, he had to spend the entire movie on the floor, dead. I mean, once he'd been gilled and the most funny part of it all was Peter Collinson required him to come in every morning and to go to hair and makeup and lie in a pool of blood every single morning. That is what he required. It was a very important part. It was almost like a play when you're, when you, you're, you know, if we'd had another body there or just a thing, but it wasn't, it was Dennis. Peter brought him in and laid him there in a pool of blood and we had to keep stepping over him. And it was, it was a terrifying thing. And I think it was terribly important to all of us because in actual fact, Fright was like a play because it was set in, the, the house was in the studio. The studio was where we went every single day. That room, basically in the house where Ian breaks in through the window to where I am with, with Tara. That was, that was one set. And so it really was like a play for all of us. It was very um, claustrophobic. And I think that Peter loved that. Again, this is something, that's something a director does, which is wonderful. You build up a, a, a space that is the space of which you're going to work. And you make that space everything that you want to tell within a story. If you want that space to be terrifying and ugly and frightening and unpredictable and you make that space like that and you put all the ingredients, like baking a cake, you put all the ingredients around that space to make it just like that. And uncomfortable is what Peter wanted us all to be, incredibly uncomfortable. Not knowing what was going to happen next, we didn't. You know, Dennis and I were having a little love in and then terror struck. Um, a window broke and this man broke in and her boyfriend in front of her was killed and now she's looking after this tiny five-year-old child. I mean, intense, scary, alone in this house and I did feel alone in that house with Ian Bannon. Every day I came into work and every day we started to work again when he walked on the set I felt terrified and alone. Now I'm not a, a method actor, I'm very instinctive and I work for the moment I didn't, feel, I didn't feel nervous or uncomfortable or anything else in makeup or hair or at breakfast, but directly I stood on that set. There was an intensity that Peter Collinson had made that we all walked into, just like walking on the stage of a play. And you know, um, the most amazing thing was this, this little boy that I was looking after that was Peter's son, Tara. In a way that was, that was clever because it was someone that Peter could watch over. It was his son. What was wonderful, it was indicative of how much he trusted me, was that he trusted me with his son every single day. And to make it as much of a game, which is what was my choice, I made it for Tara as much of a game as I possibly could, um, for him and I not to be frightened. And off camera, I would say, this is a scary moment, but it's only scary because People think it's scary, but it's not scary for you and I, is it, Tara? We, you know, you and I, we're not frightened by this, this stupid man. I mean, that's how I was all the time with this little boy. You know, I grew up in this business and I was acting from the age I was four myself. I was never in this predicament when I was four. I was doing a Horlicks commercial saying how lovely it was to drink Horlicks and a very different thing. And um, for me, I could never have put my child through this. I thought it was amazing of them as parents to do it. They must have trusted me all round. It was, it was, that's, that's why I think it was so important that I was part of their family life, went to their home, sat around a big table, had discussions, talked about life and projects and all sorts of things. We were, they made me really part of the family. And, um, that was good too because I was part of Tara's family at home as a friend before we went on the set. So it wasn't like you were introducing a child to an actress. 
um, I was his friend. I was Tara, Tara's friend. And if you consider, I was in my early, I was in my teens. And so even though Tara was a baby, I was still a baby too, really. I mean, we did a lot of things where I held a dummy and we took him off the set. But we did a lot of things. I remember Banner with the broken glass. He has a piece of broken glass and holds me up against the window, me and Tara. And I remember that so well. And I remember feeling the glass on my neck and how it felt. And I remember thinking that this child was just here in my arms and how terrifying that was. And we did a lot of things in those days that were highly dangerous, too dangerous, and perhaps one wouldn't do today. But the film itself, I think it worked amazingly. Um, and I know that a lot of people absolutely to this day really love that film and they comment on it all the time. I always get comments on Fright. I think I, most of the comments are, I won't be alone at night whilst I'm watching this movie. <laughs> I haven't watched it for, I don't know, nigh on 30 years, so I can't remember the terror now. I remember the terror of making it, and I know that it was a magic movie. I know it really worked. I know when we went to the premiere, I thought, God, this is truly terrifying, terrifying. It is truly terrifying. And that's what Peter set out to make. And that's what I, as an actress, set out to portray and to bring across and to, to in this make-believe world, to make people believe. And I think we all did that um, admirably, more than admirably. <laughs> One of the moments I remember the most from the whole movie was the last sequence in the movie and it was the only time that we were ever outside the house. And it was when the siege came to actually get him. It was when we had got outside and I had the gun. And I remember how absolutely terrifying that sequence was with the police all around, all around the studio, all in the studio. And it was like a real, real life hostage. And we were all standing outside and that was absolutely, <sighs> extraordinary. I remember that night. We shot it at night and we didn't need to shoot it at night but again Peter set up this feeling and the location outside was shot in the studio. That's why it was done pitch black at night and all the studio was pitch black and they managed to create that on the street vision in the studio. Again here we were back in this cocoon of, of claustrophobia again because even though we were outdoors we were in a sense indoors and it was terrifying because we really were all outside and Ian Bannon was inside and we didn't know what was going to happen and I was a part of that and I had to take part in it and God I remember that crystal clear vividly to this day absolutely absolutely horrendously terrifying <laughs> Sergeant! Keep away from him! Brian! It was a popular film. Um, <laughs> and we, the critics were very kind. And um, But as I said, and I repeat, I think Peter Conson was an incredible director, an extraordinary talent that was so, and I think he was so underrated. Um, and that's why I know if he'd been alive today, we'd have made much, much more together. I absolutely know that. As happens in life, I'd not seen the family for a long time. And when I heard about Peter, I was so shattered. Um, it indeed was a good friend. He'd, he'd come to my house many, many times and as I'd gone to his. And 
I felt it was a real hole, a real um, gap in my life, somebody very, very special who I had lost. I think the most important thing about, about fright that the audience have felt every single time is how real it was. And that that, that situation, no matter how crazy it might seem for somebody to get out of an asylum and actually come back and arrive at a house and get in and start threatening the people inside, that's a very, very scary thing. And the most important element of the making of that film was that that became a reality. And Peter was able to, and hopefully Ian and myself and the cast entirely, were able to bring that to life that that was a reality, that was something that was happening. And I think that it does measure up today. And people tell me constantly, constantly, constantly that, they, that they've just seen it or they're going to see it. And it's, it's been watched a lot. That movie has had a lot of audience. And I think it does, I think it's held that kind of, that fear factor, as I say, it's all about honesty. It's about telling the truth. And if you really can bring that to the screen, the truth of yourself and the truth of the circumstance, then of course, that kind of circumstance is going to be absolutely terrifying. And anybody sitting in their seat at home and watching is going to be fearful that if somebody comes and touches them on the shoulder and says, I'm just about to make a cup of tea, they're probably going to jump out of their skins because it's so truthful. And that, I think, is the most important thing about Fright. It told the truth.